In the last section, we saw that water consists of polar molecules and that the polarity of water ends up leading to a number of very special things about water. Water is different from a lot of other liquids and it's essential to life. So we're gonna take a minute or two and just sort of bring out some of these special properties of water. So again, this is building on the fact that water is polar. The fact that water is polar means that it doesn't mix with some things. It only tends to mix with other polar substances. So what you're looking at right here is a, um, a picture of water mixed with oil. And the simple fact is they don't mix together. It tends to be that the oil sort of clumps up into these little groupings. We can see right there's a droplet of oil. Over here is the water and they're just not really combining together. And that's due to the fact that water is polar oil is not. So this is um, one way that in living things um, inside of cells, which are very small, inside of cells there's a lot of organization. And some of that organization is just due to the fact that some molecules tend to group together when they're placed in water. So this is kind of a good example of that. Another special thing about water is that it helps to stabilize temperatures. This is true throughout the world. Um, what we're looking at here is a picture of ice. So this is the solid form of water. And the solid form of water, uh, its molecular structure looks something like this. So if we just look at the individual atoms, uh, excuse me, molecules, right here's a molecule of water. Here's an adjacent molecule of water, and what we have is a hydrogen bond between them. So when water is frozen, when it's in the form of ice, what happens is those hydrogen bonds are really stabilizing the structure, right? They are, um, in liquid water, these bonds might form and then break a moment later and then reform with a different mo molecule. But in the case of ice, these bonds are, they're kind of like fixed. They're holding the whole structure together in this very stable form. So if you imagine um, adding some energy or some heat into this system, what's going to happen is it takes a lot of heat to break all of these hydrogen bonds that have formed and stabilized in the structure. <clears throat> Excuse me. So water, it turns out, water can absorb a lot of energy before it will go through a transition back to a liquid form. Okay, so it's sort of like absorbing extra heat that might exist in the environment. Another special property resulting from the polarity of water is the fact that it is cohesive. So just looking at this picture here, what we're looking at is a needle that's floating on top of some water. And why is it floating? Why doesn't it just sink down into the water? Well, it's because water is cohesive. Water likes to stick to itself. So right underneath of this needle, what's going on is the water molecules, remember, they've, they are forming hydrogen bonds with each other. So they're sort of like holding on to each other and that's giving the water some good surface tension. Um, which prevents some things like this needle from being able to just dip down into the water. Um, this is also how some bugs are able to walk on the surface of water, like water striders, they can float along the surface. That's due to water's surface tension, or in other words, due to the cohesiveness of water. Another thing about water is that it's really great at dissolving other things. It acts as a good solvent. So this might be um, this might be a new word for you, solvent. Let's just, um, let's kind of describe some things here. So if you have, um, let's use a familiar, familiar example. If you dissolve some salt into water, just like in the kitchen, you stir some salt into water, it will dissolve. It'll go into solution is what we would say. So solution is the word for the mixture of two things, water and salt. Okay, that's a solution. And that solution consists of a solvent and a solute. These are some special words we'll be using later on in the course. We're just introducing them right now. So the solvent would be the water. It's the thing that did the dissolving. Um, and then the salt would be the solute. <laughs> okay, so the solute gets dissolved by the solvent and together they make up a solution. So anyway, let's take a look at this picture together. Um, what we have are some water molecules illustrated and remember the polarity of water molecules. They have a negative end and they have some positive regions as well. So in the case of salt, 
uh, which is made up of a sodium ion and a chlorine ion, chloride ion. Um, in the case of salt, what happens is the water, it's attracted to both of these ions, even though one is negative and the other is positive. Okay, um, the positive ends of the water molecule are going to be attracted over to this negative chloride ion. So they'll form sort of like a cage around it. And um, the negative ends of the water molecules are going to be attracted to the positive sodium ion. So again, they'll form sort of like a cage around it. So putting this all together, imagine if you drop a fresh grain of salt into the water, what's going to happen? The water molecules are going to do this very thing. They're sort of going to work their way up around the ions and separate them. So this is essentially breaking those ionic bonds that we talked about earlier on in this chapter. So water does a good job of dissolving things due to its polar um, nature. This is also a good place to mention the pH scale. Okay, the pH scale is a way for us to measure um, some properties about solutions. So when we have mixtures, like liquids, um, we will sometimes be referring to the pH of them. And what I'd like for you to take away at this point is just kind of the general concept of the pH scale. Basically, the pH scale is measuring how many hydrogen ions are free in the solution. And if we have a lot of hydrogen ions free in solution, we say that that's an acid. If we have a lot of, this is called a hydroxide ion, OH minus, this is a negative ion. If a lot of these are present in solution, then we would say that the solution is a base. So what we have mapped out here are some um, perhaps familiar things. And this is the pH scale. It ranges from zero all the way up to 14. Right in the middle is where we have pure water. Okay? Pure water is, it's neutral. It's, um, it's not acidic and it's not basic. It's right in the middle. On the lower end of the pH scale, these are all acidic things. Okay? So lemon juice, that's very acidic. It has a lot of hydrogen ions present. On the other end of the spectrum, we have basic things. Um, bleach is very a very basic solution. Baking soda is basic as well. So uh, the lower the number, the more acidic. The higher the number, the more basic.